Anemia is decreasing red blood cell count, hemoglobin or hematocrit levels as compared to the normal reference length for age and sex. They are disorders that involve a reduction in number of erythrocytes or red blood cells and include both inherited and acquired disorders. As a general rule, anemias are a result of either altered production of red blood cells, loss of blood volume, increased erythrocyte destruction, or a combination of blood. The most common classification used to define anemia centers on the physical characteristics of the red blood cells, like the size and hemoglobin content. If there is a change in the cell size, the suffix cytic is used such as normocytic, macrocytic or microcytic anemias. And if there is an alteration of hemoglobin content, the suffix chromic is used, like in normochromic, hyperchromic or hypochromic when we have low hemoglobin content. Macrocytic disorders include pernicious and folate acid deficiency anemias, while microcytic disorders are iron deficiency anemias and thalassemias. Aplastic, hemolytic and sickle cell anemias are normocytic disorders. All anemias, irrespective of the cause, result in a reduced oxygen carrying capacity. We have true and pseudo anemia or dilutional anemia. In true anemia, it occurs when there is a decreased red blood cell mass and a normal plasma volume. But in pseudo or dilutional anemia, there is normal red blood cell mass and an increased plasma volume. An increase in plasma volume may cause a dilutional or pseudonemia whereby there is low hemoglobin and hematocrit values even though the red blood cell mass is normal. And this occurs during pregnancy, always caused by a volume overload intravenously and in congestive heart failure. We have the normal reference ranges like in the normal red blood cell count should be 4.5 to 5.9 times 10 raised to power 6 in male and 4.1 to 5.1 times 10 raised to power 6 in female. Hemoglobin content should be between 14.0 grams per deciliter to 17.0 grams per deciliter in male and in 12.3 to 15.3 grams per deciliter in females. Hematocrit is 43 to 50% in male and 36 to 45% in females. Classification of anemia. We have etiologic classification where we classify anemia according to the cause. And this includes impaired red blood cell destruction, excessive destruction and blood loss. And in morphologic classification, we have macrocytic anemias, microcytic hypochromic anemia, and normochromic normocytic anemias. Let us start with an impaired red blood cell production. Red blood cell production can be impaired in case of abnormal bone marrow like in aplastic anemia, myelophthesis, myelofibrosis and leukemia. We can also have essential factors deficiency which may impair red blood cell production like iron, vitamin B12 and folic acid and also we have anemia in renal disease whereby there is deficiency of erythropoietin stimulation factor deficiency and this occurs in anemia of chronic disease anemia in hypopituitarism and anemia in hypothyroidism excessive destruction of red blood cells hemolytic anemias results from excessive destruction of red blood cells and this can be due to intracorpuscular defect like membrane defect in hereditary spherocytosis and hereditary ovalocytosis. We have enzyme defect in glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency and hemoglobin defects like in thalassemias and hemoglobininopathies. Extracorpuscular defects causing excessive destruction of red blood cells include mechanical defects like in macroangiophatic hemolytic anemias, chemical or physical factors, infections like in clostridium tetany, and antibodies like systemic lupus erythromatosis and hyperspilidism can cause excessive hemolysis, blood loss which can be acute or chronic, and acute blood loss results from accidents and gastrointestinal bleeding while chronic blood loss results from hypermenorrhea and parasitic infestations. 
morphology classification, we have three classes. Macrocytic anemia where the MCV is more than 94 and mean cell hemoglobin concentration is more than 31 and this one can be caused by megaloplastic dyspoiesis, vitamin B2 deficiency leading to pernicious anemia, folic acid deficiency like in nutritional megaloblastic anemia, and inborn errors of metabolism like in erotic aciduli and abnormal DNA synthesis like in chemotherapy, anticonvulsant therapies and oral contraceptive use. The second classification is microcytic hypochromic anemia where the mean capacity level volume is less than 80 and mean cell hemoglobin concentration is less than 27. We have iron deficiency anemia due to chronic blood loss, inadequate diet of iron, malabsorption of iron or increased demand like in pregnancy, abdominal globin synthesis like in thalassemia with or without hemoglobinopathies and abnormal porphyrin and heme synthesis which occurs in pyridoxin responsive anemia. Normocytic normochromic anemia where there is anemia of MCV 82 to 92 mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration of more than 30. This occurs due to blood loss, increased plasma volume, pregnancy and overhydration. Hemolytic anemias, hyperplastic bone marrow, aplastic anemia and red blood cell aplasia can cause normocytic normochromic anemias and also infiltrate bone marrow like in leukemia, multiple myeloma and myelofibrosis. Abnormal endocrine factors can cause adrenal insufficiency like in kidney disease, liver disease and liver cirrhosis. The clinical manifestations or the symptoms of anemia will be more severe if the onset is rapid or if there is a coexisting cardiorespiratory disease. And many clinical features are non-specific but to get they should raise a suspicion of anemia. The symptoms include tiredness, lightheadedness, breathlessness, worsening of the coexisting disease such as angina pectoris. The signs of anemia include a mucous membrane pallor, tachypnea, raised jugular venous pressure, flow mammas, ankle edema, posterior hypertension, and tachycardia. The clinical assessment and investigation of anemia should gauge its severity and divine the underlying cause. Treatment of anemia. There's no treatment of anemia is necessary, but the primary management is to address the condition which has caused that anemia. Oral iron and parenteral iron can be used as ferrous sulfate once daily on an empty stomach, and is the standard approach to replenish iron stores in iron deficiency anemias. When the anemia is severe or is adversely affecting the quality of life or functional status, then treatment involves either red blood cell transfusion or parenteral recombinant erythropoietin therapy. Folic acid supplementation of 1 mg per day orally for folic acid deficiency and intramuscular or subcutaneous injection of 100 micrograms of vitamin B12 in vitamin B12 deficiency anemias. Also, you have to avoid non-oxidant medications in glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. Thank you and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.